lightning streaks the sky, illuminating the rain-drenched streets. And over the noise of the storm, someone asks two questions about whether the video has been released yet and whether the Supernatural Force Association has responded to it in any way. And since the association did not react in any way, it means that they do not want to reveal the source of supernatural power. As it turned out, these questions were asked by one of the criminals who attacked the students, holding them hostage. The children were in a panic, but they reassured themselves that the association shouldn't care, so they had to be saved, they just had to wait a little. And then one of the students decided to fight back against the criminals in order to at least try to stop them. But just as the daredevil wanted to do something, he was stopped by Lin Luan with the words that the teenager should not be a hero and control himself, because he could not do anything against the bandits alone. However, the guy was not alone, because the others were ready to help him, because everyone wanted to be saved, and there were only four criminals, so the students decided to join forces. But the bandits turned out to be not so simple, so they quickly noticed that something was being prepared against them, and ordered the teenagers to behave more calmly and one of them had the power to increase in size, which looked very scary. The teenagers did not expect such a turn of events, so suddenly all their confidence in victory instantly evaporated. Although the criminal's accomplices with the strength of his height told him not to go too far with the children, he still hit one of the children with all cruelty. The blow was so strong that the blood of the unfortunate student scattered in different directions. This action frightened all the students so much that they began to panic and run away in all directions without even thinking. Lin Wen then realized that this was the perfect moment to save himself, and shouted about this to the guy Hao, whom he had previously stopped. But the daredevil once again decided to act like a hero, thinking not about himself, but about the others. After all, the student understood that not everyone would be able to escape from the giant, so he wanted to help as many people as possible. Then Luan remembered a situation from his childhood, when he and five of his friends swam to the middle of the lake, and he returned alone, and then many scolded him for not helping the others. As a result, the rest of the children were saved by others, but many still blamed the boy for the fact that if his friends died, then their deaths would be on his conscience. Lin himself did not understand what he was to blame for, because he would not have been able to help the others, but at least he could save himself. Therefore, using the same logic, Luan told Hao that they needed to leave in order to save themselves first. The students realized that the best solution would be to duck, walk where there is no light, and head towards the door through which they can escape. But then the guys noticed a figure that was on the mother-in-law, but it was not clear who exactly it was because of the darkness. The stranger concluded that the turmoil was the best time to act. After these words, the unknown person jumped out of cover and struck one of the criminals doing everything so quickly that he did not even meet resistance. As it turned out, the stranger's name was Ji Fong, and he was one of the most popular newly minted heroes with supernatural power from the association. And if he was here, it meant that the others were saved. The man waited for the best moment, and as soon as it came, the hero took advantage of it and quickly dealt with the villains. But Fong defeated only three of the four criminals, because the last one hid in the crowd of fleeing students but the hero himself did not know about it. Lin tried to shout to the man, however, due to the bustle he could not be heard, so the guy could not warn the hero and decided to save himself, hoping that Fong himself would fix everything. The hero himself from the association had already reported on the phone that he had dealt with everything, and almost all of the students had already run out into the street, so he believed that everything was fine. But Fong relaxed early, because while he was distracted, he was attacked from behind by a fourth criminal, whose existence the hero did not even know about, so he was not prepared for this attack. And then, unexpectedly, the man was saved by a boy, who kept repeating to himself that first of all he needed to save himself, and in the end he jumped under the attack of the villain in order to save another person. Lin again remembered that moment from childhood, because it was then that the boy wanted to become a hero when he saved the rest of the guys thanks to the fact that he swam quickly and was able to loudly call for help. In this situation, the student really acted like a real hero, because by sacrificing himself, he saved the man. According to the criminal, Ji Fong is a vile person, because he hid in the crowd in order to attack later, and the villain was glad that he was able to escape in a timely manner. Then the villain began to discuss how he could punish the boy for preventing the murder of a popular hero 
who would no longer be alive if not for Luan's act. Then Ji Feng ordered the criminal to release the student, but would agree to this only if the hero threw away his sword so that everything would be fair. The villain ridiculed the man who is the hero of the association, but at the same time it is he who is saved, and not vice versa. In the end, the hero had to make this deal so that the criminal would stop torturing the teenager, so he had to throw away his sword. According to the criminal, foam without a sword is not his opponent, so he began to rejoice, thinking that he could now win this battle. However, while the villain rejoiced at his still unattained victory, the hero was able to grab the sword again and deal the enemy a blow that he did not expect. So Fen managed to cut off the criminal's hand, in which the guy was located, and he simply fell to the ground, hitting him hard. The hero, in turn, simply apologized to the student, explaining to him that the situation was simply critical, so it was necessary to act quickly, otherwise someone else might get hurt. Luan became a hero who saved everyone, but, unfortunately, no one could save the teenager himself, who simply remained lying on the ground. Finally, Fong only told the boy that the blow was fast, so Lin should not have felt anything, so he would die without pain. Feng's savior did not understand how the hero could kill him without hesitation, because the man could have come up with something to save the teenager, but Ji simply did not want to come to the rescue. And then Lin saw a sign, as if in a game, which said that the guy had received a chance to be resurrected, and then the question of whether he wanted to take advantage of this chance. Saving the hero, Luan himself died, and now his funeral was taking place, which took place on a cloudy rainy day. Meanwhile, Fong received thanks for being able to heroically rescue more than 200 people yesterday at 8 in the evening at Wenching High School, where the attackers had taken all its students hostage. The news said that Ji Fong had once again proven that their city's security could be relied upon. And while Fong listened to the enthusiastic cries in his direction, and Lin Luan's mother cried at his funeral, he himself chose to be resurrected in this mysterious tablet. An inscription appeared on the sign stating that regeneration was complete, and then the question arose whether to accept the reward, which was the use of an ability called capture. Lin decided that this ability would not make him any worse, continuing to regenerate with the thought that he should teach Ji Fen a lesson. Therefore, Wan decided to accept this ability, wanting to take revenge on the hero for leaving the guy to die without even trying to save him. It turned out that as soon as he agreed to a second attempt at life, he was returned to the moment when he died, so he immediately found the hero and attacked him from behind. Phone was talking on the phone at this time, reporting the situation, so he didn't expect that anyone would attack him. Therefore, the man was unable to find his bearings when one bit him on the shoulder, so hard that blood gushed out. With the help of the blood that was shed because of Lin Luan, the guy was able to analyze the hero's abilities learning that among them were shadow walking, snake execution, crow tenacity and breathing method. And this analysis was done for a reason, because the surviving student can absorb one of the granted abilities. When the hero saw that the student was still alive, then with the question of why he had not died yet, Fong began to strike the boy. Luan, meanwhile, was thinking about which ability from the available ones he should choose, and eventually settled on the shadow approach. Thanks to this strength, the teenager was able to dodge the blow that the hero wanted to inflict on him. But the problem was that Lin had no idea how to use and control this ability. Phone noticed the power the boy used, and then told him that it was quite ordinary, so the hero would not be surprised by this, because he did not know that this ability was stolen from him. As a result, both young people used this ability, but only one of them knew how to use it. Of course, the man's advantage was obvious so he was already ready to deal a fatal blow to the student, whom, on the contrary, he was supposed to save. But this was not allowed to happen, because after the bite the hero's DNA began to change, so that suddenly he simply froze in place. And then Fong simply laid down his sword without making the blow with which he so wanted to take the life of the one who saved him. The guy himself did not understand what had just happened, because he was already sure that he would soon die again. Then it appeared before Luan's eyes that the subjugation was completed, and he received a new slave, and after that the hero called him master. The guy learned that his abilities include the fact that after analyzing the enemy's abilities, he will be able to bite him and absorb one of them, and the student also introduces a systemic factor into the enemy's body, thereby rewriting his genetic code, forcing him to obey.
Luan was surprised that the hero just wanted to kill him, and now he obeys, and after that Fong apologized to the guy, calling him master, and Lin, in turn, asked not to call him that. After this, the guy began to scold the man for attacking so recklessly, and because of this, casualties could not be avoided, to which the hero replied that sacrificing several civilians to stop the villains is normal practice. Then the student began to become disillusioned with the association, because one of the most popular heroes tells him things that don't seem right, which means that the rest are most likely the same. Lin Luan was so surprised by this whole situation that he still did not believe that Fong was under his control, so he decided to test it by ordering the man to kill himself. The hero answered without hesitation that he was listening, ready to do whatever the student ordered him to do, and Fong was really ready to do this, because he even took out his sword for this, then bringing it to his neck. But at the last moment, when the hero was already on the verge of death, Lin ordered him to stop, because he initially did not expect that his words would be heeded. Luan decided that let the man live for now, but he still decided to mock him, ordering the hero to take off his pants while the teenager himself recorded it on his phone camera. Phone carried out all the orders of the student, and he, in turn, decided to disgrace the man by forcing him to take funny photographs. The student found it very funny and he even imagined how he would show this to the girls he knew, because they would go crazy because of it. But then Juan's fun was interrupted by a girl who quietly approached the teenager mocking the hero. And it so happened that this heroine came in at the wrong time, because she saw something that would be very difficult to explain. Then Lin ordered the man to quickly get dressed, while he himself looked at the girl, who turned out to be unfamiliar to him, so he began to guess that she was also someone from the association. The heroine came for the hero, but told the boy that it was time for him to leave too, because his parents were probably already terribly worried. Finally, Juan gave his slave an order that the man tell a press conference tomorrow about everything that happened today. Phone responded that he was listening, and this short dialogue attracted the attention of the woman, who was surprised at what she had just heard. After this, the teenager ran to his mother and friend, who were very worried about the unexpectedly missing guy. Everyone immediately began to worry about the student's condition, but he began to reassure him with words that the boy felt great. The Supernatural Power Association building was simply colossal in size, cutting through the skies. It was to this building that Ji Fong and the stranger who came to pick him up went. The girl stopped the hero, who was about to leave, and then asked if he had a minute. As it turned out, it was ten minutes before the press conference, so the stranger did not have much time to talk with the man. The question that the heroine so wanted to ask was whether the boy with whom the man was found was his fan, because the stranger was very curious about it. And then the girl asked if Fong had written down the tags that he was going to cover, finally asking to look at them. Luan, meanwhile, realized that he could activate the ability only for points, of which he had fifty when revived, but at the moment zero, and he did not know at all what to do to get it. But in the end, the guy decided that now was not the best time for him to think about it because he was very tired, and only wanted the lessons to end as quickly as possible. Due to loss of strength after past events, Lin did not listen to the teacher at all, but simply practically slept during the lesson. And as expected, this was noticed by the teacher, who did not at all like what Luan was doing in class instead of mastering the educational material. Teacher Xu made the guy stand up and repeat to the class what Newton said, and the student, in turn, explained that he still couldn't recover from yesterday, and that's why he was so absent-minded. But they didn't even want to listen to the student, telling him to return from heaven to earth, because it was just an accident, so you need to think not about what happened, but about the fact that there were only two months left before the state exam. However, Lin was not so sure that the attack was just an accident, because the school is always under guard, but yesterday, when the guards changed, in 20 minutes the attackers were able to easily enter the institution, but it remained a mystery how they did it, because the time of the changing of the guard is determined in advance, and the schedule for changing the guard is only available in the training section, so it was unclear how this information reached the criminals. Then one of the students asked that Luan really wanted to say that the school unit conspired with the attackers so that they could take over the school. Lin explained to this student, whose name was Wang Tianhao, that this was not what he meant at all. But Wang continued to argue with him, arguing that there could be no other meaning in the boy's words. As a result, 
The teacher stopped this argument, ordering Lin Luan to spend the rest of the lesson standing, punishing him for his behavior. And then Luan saw that he was awarded one point for causing hostility on the part of Zhu Dayan, who was the teacher, and this greatly amazed the boy, because it turned out that you can earn points by arguing with the teacher. During recess, the teenager's friend asked how he was feeling, to which the guy replied that he was really hungry, so he needed to fix it. There was already talk in the class about who would take what exams, and everyone assumed that Wang Tianhao would take the exam in the specialty of supernatural power, because the guy was the strongest in the school. Then the student told the others not to worry, because he already had enough power to protect them all. And then Van again focused his attention on Wan, telling him that the guy is an egoist who is only thinking about how to escape. After these words, rumors began to circulate around the class that Lin Wan had run away during the attack on the school, but the lives of his comrades did not bother him at all. But the teenager was not at all upset by this because before his eyes he saw that he had received another 10 points due to the fact that he had aroused hostility from his classmates due to selfishness. Wan's friend then stood up for him, telling Wang Tianhao to shut his mouth and not say what he didn't know. The guy with green hair responded to this by saying that Lu Jiahao is most likely the same as his friend Lin, because whoever you mess with is what you get. And then Wang emphasized that Lu was talented enough, so there was a chance that after passing the psionics exam, the guy would stop being attracted to such a non-entity as Wan. But these words only angered the protagonist's friend even more. But Tian Hao was not afraid of threats, because he was the strongest, so the students could not do anything to him. Confident that no one would touch him, Van was unable to fight off the slap that unexpectedly flew at him. And then Wan, who hit the guy with green hair, received another five points for starting a fight with a classmate and causing hostility on the part of Wang Tian Hao and then the main character realized on what principle he was awarded points. It turns out that Lin Luan becomes stronger thanks to bad deeds, which seemed to the guy a rather strange system. Then the student decided that it was time for him to become bad, because since others can be insolent and pretend to be strong, then why can't he do the same? But all the hero's agility evaporated the moment that the offended Van began to approach the guy, clearly not with friendly goals. The offended student even decided to use magic to take revenge for the blow his classmate dealt him. The guy almost struck, but the main character managed to escape, avoiding his terrible fate. However, the offended student did not want to give up so easily, so he decided to throw another blow called the Thunder Palm, which was the technique of the guy's family. But even here Luan was lucky, because he managed to escape without receiving more than one blow. And while Wang Tianhao was looking everywhere to finish off his brave classmate, he himself decided to have dinner, because he was really hungry. The main character has already eaten four pizzas, two baked chickens and five steaks, for which he received another point due to gluttony and hostility on the part of the cafe owner. Lu, meanwhile, asked his friend what he was going to do next, because the situation was quite dangerous. But Lin simply decided that he would hide and that's it, and would not do anything else. Because, fortunately for him, the next day would be a day off. But the protagonist's friend started talking about the fact that there is a reagent that can turn anyone into a psionicist, and then asked Luan if he would like to try to become one. Lu noted that his friend is strong enough that even he sometimes finds it difficult to defeat the guy. And if it's all because of the reagent, then the Jiahao family is ready to help Luan with money. But the hero noted that since they are friends, then talking about money is inappropriate. And besides, the reagents will cost several tens of thousands. Luan cannot sit on the neck of his friend's father. And then the guy remembered that a press conference was currently being broadcast. So he asked the waiter to turn on the TV. At the press conference of the Association of Supernatural Power, it was said how the hero defeated four attackers. And at the moment when the talented psionicist Ji Fim was called onto the stage, a stranger appeared instead, who had previously wanted to talk to him. The girl announced that Fon would not be able to attend the conference, because due to the multiple injuries he received the previous day, he was urgently hospitalized. This shocked everyone, because just yesterday everything was fine with the man, and no one expected that this could happen. Luan did not understand at what point the hero managed to get injured, because at most he could have simply been scratched. And then he received a message that his subordinate was dead, on the same screen that the guy began to see after his revival. The girl on TV said that the hero would not be able to perform in the near future, 
and then offered to pray for the recovery of the psionicist, and meanwhile the student did not understand why this stranger was lying. In the end, Lin guessed that the reason was that the hero was ordered to tell the truth about his actions yesterday, so he was removed so that he could not discredit the association. After this, the teenager began to worry that he, too, might be wanted because of yesterday's incident, because if the association found out about him, the guy would face the same fate as Finn. So Wan decided that he needed to be careful with the use of his abilities so that no one would find out about them. And the hero was also pressed by the fact that on Monday he had to meet with a classmate whom he had recently hit. But for now he decided not to think about all this. So he went to his mother and asked if there was anything to eat. And then the teenager noticed that his mother was behaving strangely, as if she was hiding something important from him. Suddenly, someone started knocking hard on the door shouting that it was opened as soon as possible. It was the aunt who came running to ask how much money the boy's mother had transferred to the fund. It turned out that the grandson of the director of a pharmaceutical factory went on the run, taking with him the money collected by the fund in the amount of 10 million, and the goods turned out to be fakes that did not bring any effect, and Juan's mother transferred 100,000 to these scammers, which was the allowance of the woman's father, which is paid one time to the family of the deceased. This is how the hero found out that his mother had purchased a reagent for a lot of money to improve her son's health, and she did this because of the day when Lin did not leave school for a long time, and the woman's plan simply included a desire to help her son become stronger. People who also fell for the scammer's promises began to organize strikes to get all their money back, so that there was a chance that they would achieve something. Then the teenager said that he wanted to go for a walk, and then added that there was no need to worry about him because he was just kicking a ball with Hal. But Luan did not go to play ball at all, but in fact he went to the place where the strike was taking place. And while the strikers were discussing what they would do next, Lin calmly jumped over the fence protecting the factory. The teenager found the CEO's office, and then decided that he needed to find clues, such as the address where he or his accomplices lived, and then the student could easily settle everything. And then an unknown man came to this office asking the hero why he came to this place. Luan recognized this young man as the leader among the protesters, and then explained to the man that the back door was open, so he slipped through. Then the protester said that he understood everything, and then smiled. And this smile did not coincide with the fact that the sign appeared with a message about plus one point for hostility on the part of Lubin. It turned out that Lubin was the main one among the protesters, and the teenager did not understand where the hostility came from if the student wanted to expose the fraudster. Suspecting something, Luan asked the man how he himself got into this office, and he said that he also went through the back door to look for clues. Then the boy began to talk about how the thieves would definitely get what they deserved, because everything would come back to them like a boomerang. The young man somehow hesitantly agreed with the guy's words, and he, in turn, saw that he received more points for hostility on the part of Lubin. Then Lin realized that the man was an accomplice of Sun Che Gong, and he was pretending to be injured only in order to divert suspicion from himself. The teenager decided to use his capture ability, which cost him 50 points that he had previously accumulated thanks to the hatred of his classmates. Using his power, the guy learned that the scammer's abilities include speaking, boasting, legal knowledge and culinary skills. With the help of a high level of performance, one could act in films, or become a fraudster, so the student decided to take this particular skill. And while Lubin threatened Luan, he, in turn, was only waiting for his ability to finally take effect. Finally, when the power began to act, the man fell silent, and then simply called the student master, awaiting orders. Then the teenager ordered the scammer to explain why he was pretending to be the victim, and he began to explain that there were three reasons for this, including the desire to find out how the protesters are also to become their leader and to gain their trust in order to deceive again. After listening to his subordinate's plans, Luan ordered him to be taken to Sun Chungong. Meanwhile, at the Jade Pond Hotel, the girl admired a gemstone called Azure Mica, which had a very high market value, and the owner of this jewel was the same swindler who boasted to the girl that with the help of this stone he would increase the family fortune. Then the stranger asked Chungong if he planned to hide for the rest of his life because everyone was looking for him, and he should be afraid that he might be discovered. To which the man replied that people are like fish, because they remember for half a month, and then they forget, then it will be possible to return. 
Also, the scammer had six bodyguards, so people didn't scare him at all. The main character ended up in this hotel, brought by Lubin, carrying out the orders of his master. Thanks to his subordinate, the guy was able to get past the security without any problems, because the man said that he belonged. So the student and his practically slave reached the main swindler, who immediately asked his accomplice if he was able to calm down the rioters. Driven by anger, Lin headed towards the one who had defrauded his mother of a lot of money, and while the scammer was not expecting it, the teenager hit him, putting all his hatred into this blow. The blow was so strong that Chingong began to bleed, and at that time the hero called him a worthless boar. The student threw the man to the floor, and the girl was very scared of this, and therefore began to scream. But Wan's subordinate quickly reacted to this, telling the guards not to pay attention, because everything was fine. And while the guards thought that their owner was just having fun, the student was able to beat him to his heart's content as punishment for deception. When the swindler was asked where all the stolen money was, he replied that he did not have it, because he had invested everything in new spar. In the man's opinion, it was not just a stone, but a mountain mineral that he bought from the Wang family's pharmaceutical company, so there was a high probability that it was not a fake and the criminal sold ordinary stones to people because he took all the spar for himself, because he is a gemologist and knows about stones. Then the main character thought that the skill of knowing stones would be useful to him in order to find spar. Wan decided it was time to bite Chingong to gain his knowledge of gemology, but the guy was unable to activate his ability, because he did not have enough points for this. However, the student did not want to back down, so he already began to think about who he could earn points on. In the end, he decided to settle on guards who were ordinary people and not psionics. But they still paid a lot for them. The boy ordered his subordinate to go out to the guards and say that they were all fired, and he himself, an ordinary student, would be in their place. The man obeyed his master's orders and did everything as he was told, and then added that the guard's place was in the trash heap, not here. Meanwhile, Luan noticed the spar, and then decided that it was in it that the thief had invested a fortune. When the guy looked at this spar, for some unknown reason his appetite increased, as if he had not eaten for a whole week. Therefore, the teenager could not resist, and without thinking twice, ate this precious stone. After this, the hero felt the power overwhelm him, and then he understood exactly how spar should work. And while the guy was enjoying the feeling of strength, the guards decided to interrupt him in order to sort out who was causing them to be fired. It turned out that these guards were from the most famous company providing personal security services called Shida. And since this company had professionally trained people, the money they paid for them was not small. But even these mercenaries, who have extraordinary skill, could not defeat the boy who ate the spar. The student had so much strength that even he himself was surprised at how much his abilities had improved. Looking at the tablet, the main character realized that he now had enough points to use his power. The man did not understand what the boy who burst into his room was up to. But even without knowing what would happen next, he was still very scared. The first thing Juan ordered his new subordinate was to stop crying, because the man still could not calm down after the bite. It became clear that after submission, the characters of those bitten remained the same, which was only to the benefit of the student, because he did not want them to become soulless puppets. But the most important thing that Lin realized is that by hating his subordinates, he also gets points. And since everyone hates Chingong, then he will get a lot of points from this. Luan first thanked the swindler for bringing his master so many points. And then the hero could not restrain himself and hit the thief again. Because such an amount of hatred shows that he had deceived a large number of people. Remembering the people, Lin ordered his subordinates to compensate for the damage to those who were deceived within three months and then added that this could be done either with money or with real spatulas. Later, the teenager asked Chingong if the Wang family knew about the man's machinations, because this was the family of his classmate, to which the man replied that these people really knew about everything. The hero also gave an order that as soon as his puppets completed the task, they would still have to cooperate with the Wang family, deceiving only them, but not other people. Subordinates will have to find out more about this family find out what else they are doing illegally, collect all the evidence, and report to their master. The boy left his number for the men so that they would always be under his supervision, and then asked where else he could buy spar on the cheap. Then Luan was advised the Shuman market, where many people sell spar, and although you can find real ones, 
There are also plenty of suspicious people, so you need to be careful. And while Lin was calmly walking around the market, looking at the goods, a man ran into him and practically swept the teenager off his feet. On the phone the man talked about getting rid of the goods as soon as possible. And as soon as the hero recovered from the blow, someone crashed into him again. But this time it was a girl who had previously been talking on the phone that the suspect was heading towards Lola Lane. The teenager asked the stranger if they had all agreed, and she, in turn, apologized and hurried forward. It seemed that the stranger was running after exactly the man who had encountered Juan before. But then everyone saw that this was not just a man running past, but a man with real strength. The stranger swung at the girl who was chasing him in order to somehow try to stop her. But with this blow the man also hit ordinary passers-by. And then Lin noticed that this stranger had the ability of gigantism, like the villains from school. So most likely this person was their accomplice. Then another man appeared and began to order the others to cordon off all the passages and drive the criminal to the old alley. Because there were no people there. It turned out that it was the Thunder Tiger Wang man, Wang Tianhao's uncle who constantly bragged about him in class. A classmate was always bragging about his uncle, who was a five-star psionicist, so Juan immediately recognized the man. Seeing the criminal, the hero immediately attacked him, activating his abilities to attack. The villain tried to escape, but he failed because the psionicist was much faster, so he quickly found himself next to the criminal. And while the runner did not understand what was happening and simply looked at the man, he used his strength, striking. The attack was so strong that the criminal was thrown several meters away. The man began to beg the tiger not to kill him, and then promised that he would not say anything, and might even swear to it. And then the psionicist replied that he believed the man's words, because the dead can be trusted. The tiger began to ask the criminal where the goods were, and if he answered then they would even be able to identify his corpse. And then the person running away began to say that he would tell everything if he was released. Every Wang Man then added that if the man does not tell him, the psionicist can easily find another approach to obtain information. Then the criminal decided to fight for his life, but the tiger only ridiculed him, calling this attempt child's play. The five-star hero was able to tear his opponent apart with one blow, without even putting in much effort. And Lin also saw everything that was happening, because he followed his classmate's uncle to see where he was going. Due to the fact that the guy crawled out of his hiding place, because he was too shocked by what was happening, it seemed that the tiger noticed him. Although the teenager managed to hide, the psionicist still heard some noise and asked who exactly was hiding like that, when the guy himself already understood that he was finished. The main character understood that since he heard this conversation, they would definitely not leave him alive, so he needed to come up with something quickly. Then the guy decided to bite the man, but it turned out that he did not have enough points for this because the enemy's life force exceeded his own. Meanwhile, the tiger was getting closer and closer to the boy, who didn't know what to do now. And then some noise was heard nearby. The psionicist was distracted by it, so this was a chance to escape, which the teenager immediately took advantage of. However, the man still managed to see the man running away, but could not see who exactly it was. But Wang Man was not going to let go of the one who overheard such an important conversation so simply shouting that the guy should not even think about escaping from the man. The psionicist ordered the others to capture the teenager, thinking that he was an accomplice of the defeated criminal. So everyone rushed to search. Lin kept running away, hiding behind different buildings, and then he realized that he had wandered into a dead end and would no longer be able to escape from those who were looking for him. The teenager had already decided that now the end would definitely come for him, because there was nowhere to run and the opponents were already approaching, but then hands appeared from the wall. These hands grabbed the guy, covering his mouth so that he would not make unnecessary sounds that could give him away. As a result, the tiger and his team did not see anyone behind this wall, and Juan did not understand how this happened. And while the boy was one step away from his opponents, they decided that he had managed to escape. Then the guy realized that he was saved by a girl named Sher Lily, who was an inspector, because it was written on her badge. And then suddenly the tiger, out of anger, hit the wall where the guys were hiding. But fortunately, the blow did not hit the people, but it was very close to them, so they were very lucky that they were not hit. And then the people of the five-star psionicist informed him that the goods had been found, thereby diverting his attention, which had previously been focused on finding the guy. 
Then the tiger ordered everyone to leave, leaving the one who overheard his conversation, because he had other things to do than play tag with the unknown boy. As soon as the man left, Luan began asking Lily a large number of questions, but the girl did not answer any of them, ordering the guy to leave quickly. Lin was surprised at how indifferent the girl who saved his life was. In the place where the goods were hidden, the tiger began to interrogate the man working there asking him if the man whom the man had recently killed had any other accomplices, to which he received the answer that the man killed was the last one. These criminals worked together with Shingong, engaged in robberies, and then hid the spar among the building stones to ward off suspicion. And then the girl who saved the guy turned to the tiger, calling the man a commander, and he then asked if it was her doing that someone managed to hide from him. After that, Wang Man asked Lily if appraisers had been sent with her, because they needed to be sent to this place as soon as possible. Then the student decided that the girl and the thunder tiger were from different squads, and the man wanted to remove Lily in order to take sole possession of the spars. The tiger, meanwhile, told the girl that her inspection department could only inform and disturb others, and then ordered her to get out. And since Lily needed someone who knew about stones, the guy decided to pretend that he was from the civil service, because he had talents for performing and gemology so he could handle it. Then the boy asked if he needed to find Spar here, and then said that it was nearby, so he quickly came. And then the guy pretended that he was a big fan of the tiger, and then introduced himself to him as Lily's friend and gemologist. After the teenager finished admiring the man, he said that he would get to work for now. Wang Man asked the girl if it was really her friend from the inspection department, to which she gave a positive answer. Although the guy knows that spar is a crystal formed through diopsidation and under the influence of supernatural forces, it can also be found in vegetation, in animals, but most often in minerals. The teenager introduced himself as a gemologist, a specialist who certifies stones based on their texture, color, and subtle fluctuations in supernatural power, but the problem is that he knows nothing about it. And then the guy saw in the sign that he could use glasses to increase the level of abilities that he had. While the student was figuring out his powers, people around him began to doubt that he would be able to find something. Meanwhile, the tiger was thinking that from the back of the boy he looked like the one who was able to hide from him. Suddenly the guy asked everyone to be silent, because they were interfering with his search. But people continued to say that Lin was only fooling them, because such a young specialist would not be able to cope with such a difficult task. Meanwhile, Luan raised the level of gemology to master, so now he began to feel the fluctuations of supernatural power. Then the guy turned to those whose strength is very great, because such people interfere with his work, and he told them not to breathe, because it would confuse him. After this, the newly minted gemologist immediately found level A spar, because he felt the power that came from such stones. As a result, out of 32 boxes, 12 were level C spar and 2 were level A. The boy marked everything, and told the others to deal with the loading because he himself is not a psionicist, so physical labor is not for him. After that, Lin went with Lily, telling her his thoughts that the tiger most likely wanted to remove the girl in order to take everything for himself, and besides, the man was familiar with those villains, so they were probably in cahoots. And when Lily asked about the evidence, the student told her that she was an inspector from the association, so she could investigate the case and find evidence herself. Then the girl explained that Wang Man was the commander of the 9th Detachment of the Reconnaissance Group, so she could not open a case against him based only on the words of the student. Lily explained that there was no way to dig under the tiger, and then asked the guy for his number and address. Luan decided that he was able to interest the girl, and she asked for his information so that she can then call him on a date, which the guy was very happy about, although he gave his school address instead of his so that his mother would not have questions, and then added that he was studying at last grade. However, Lily did not ask for this data for herself, but for the association, which could reward the student for helping them in the investigation. And then the guy added that he didn't need a reward, and it would be better if the girl just allowed herself to be bitten, after which he received a point for Lily's hostility. After this, the girl reported to her boss that the spar was found thanks to a high school student who had an amazing ability for gemology. The teenager's thoughts were occupied with the fact that he needed to find evidence that would prove the tiger's guilt, because Lily said that without evidence she could not do anything. The goal of the scammers was to make money at the expense of gullible people, 
and if the scammers were in league with the Thunder Tiger, that meant they were with the entire Wong family. The guy was worried that no one had come to class yet, although many usually come early, but for some reason everyone decided to be late. And then two of Wan's classmates began to discuss that no one came to class because Wang Tianhao and Lu Jiahao scored the arrow, so they ran to look at it. Many students gathered on the sports ground to watch the fight between two classmates. And then Li managed to hit his opponent so hard that he fell to the ground. Then Jiahao said that he won, because they agreed that whoever falls first loses, which means that Wang must now keep his promise and not bother Lin Wan anymore. However, Tianhao didn't want to accept that he lost so he said that he didn't care about words and continued to fight. And then someone from the crowd pushed Li, causing the guy to lose his balance and be distracted from his opponent. Van took advantage of his classmate's confusion and hit him hard, saying that he was the strongest in this school, so he could not be defeated. Tianhao summoned his ability to hit his opponent so hard that his bones were broken, so that he could then be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Wan had already swung, but could not hit, because he was prevented by Lin, who was in time to save his friend. No one knew that Luan had such power, so everyone present was surprised by the guy's appearance. After this, the hero asked his friend why he started fighting with his classmate, because this was not a solution to the problem. And then Lu explained that he was just tired of seeing his friend hiding every day after school, so he decided to settle the matter. Meanwhile, Van was so angry about what had happened that he even turned red from the overwhelming emotions. There were many voices buzzing in the crowd of those who saw everything. Some said that Van was no longer the strongest in the school, while others believed that the guy was simply attacked unexpectedly, and that was why he could not dodge. Tianhao didn't like being humiliated like that, so he was willing to fight further to defend his honor. The friend's enemy was furious, so they already began to think about what they should do now because running away was probably not an option at all. Lu asked his friend to teach him the blow that was used on their opponent as soon as possible. Then the teenager began to teach that he needed to concentrate, then concentrate all his strength, fueled by anger, in his legs and run. While running away, Lin also managed to ridicule his opponent, so that they ran after him. Luan was able to run far enough so that he and his classmate were alone and then admitted that he thought that it was Wang who stole the shift change schedule for the villains, because the Wang family was in cahoots with the criminals. The main character said that he knew everything, and he even knew that his opponent's uncle killed the witness, and then added that he was giving his classmate a chance to confess, otherwise he himself would report everything to the association's inspection department. Wang, in turn, did not even deny the teenager's accusations, and even praised Luan for being smart enough. And later Tian Hao even admitted that it was indeed he who suggested to his father the idea of stealing the schedule. It turned out that last year Van found the key to the training section and kept it for himself, initially without even thinking that it would be useful. It turns out that for the sake of Spar, Tian Hao endangered his own classmates, and he was not even ashamed of it, because he considers everyone just a pile of garbage. Van also believed that this was quite justified, because in the future he would become a psionicist. So thanks to him, the lives of others would be better. And Wan's classmate tells everything so boldly only because he plans to beat him so badly that the teenager will remain disabled for the rest of his days. And then he will also put a key in the boy's pocket to make him a villain. Lin responded to this that his opponent was such a vile type that he didn't even want to bite him. So instead of biting, he called on his strongest ability. So the classmates faced a very dangerous battle deciding to use all their abilities to the maximum. Luan was so fast that Wang couldn't keep up with his speed, wondering how his opponent could do it. And while Lin was talking about how the association was rotten because of people like his classmate, Tianhao himself didn't understand where someone like Lin got such speed. As a result, while Van was at a loss, his classmate was able to strike him, saying that this was to him for all his actions. Although the main character was able to inflict many blows on his opponent, and he, in turn, had not yet responded to them, Van still considered himself the strongest. Luan, meanwhile, struck again, shouting that this was his way of taking revenge for his schoolmates who had died because of his opponent's actions. This blow was so strong that he could no longer move his leg because his spine was broken. And then Lin told his classmate that he had a broken spine, so now it is unknown whether he will ever be able to get back on his feet, 
and certainly now he will not be able to go into psionics. Wan began shouting that he would tell everything to his father and uncle so that they would kill Wan and his entire family. And then the main character admitted that the Wang family now cannot escape punishment, because the teenager wrote down the entire story of his opponent, so now he has evidence. The guy sent this recording to Lily, because she said that if you find evidence, you can open a case on the tiger. And while Lin was fighting with Tian Hao, his friend at that time was also not idle, having defeated two accomplices of their main enemy. Two weeks later, Lily informed the main character that the end had come for the Wang family because thanks to the evidence, she was able to start an investigation, and it turned out that this family was in cahoots with the attackers. Luan's classmate will never be able to walk again, and he will also be sent to a juvenile detention center, but the Thunder Tiger has no direct connection with the fraud, so he could not be attracted. But killing a witness doesn't mean anything, because he was an attacker, so it's not beyond the scope of his official duties. But the guy shouldn't worry about the tiger because since the man's family was convicted of crimes, he won't be able to do anything against the student. After a telephone conversation with Luan, Lily approached her teacher, who said that Lin was an interesting guy, but in the girl's opinion, he was clearly not eager to join the association. Then the teacher told Lily not to rush into her opinion about the guy, because he needs to be given time. Meanwhile, the guy had a state exam, the first stage of which is to take blood tests for the presence of psionic energy. All the classmates told the main character that he would definitely not be able to pass the test stage, but it turned out that only Lin Luol and Lu Jiahao from the class passed it, which no one expected. Those who passed this stage were asked to go to the Western Basketball Court, so the heroes went there. There, the heroes met three more students who had passed the first stage, which surprised Lu, because usually two people passed from their school, but now five people had passed. One of those who passed the first stage was Chindoji, who showed himself in school because he had limitless potential. Also, this stage was passed by Ruan Lusher, who was the best in all subjects, attends all courses at school, and she is very smart. And the third one who also passed was Lin Su, who is an inventor and loves to understand technology. The students did not understand why they had gathered everyone when none of the teachers came to them, and then they heard some noise. Then they noticed the cat so they decided that it was from him that the noise came. However, then the teenagers saw a man who asked them if they had passed the qualification. The students were surprised by such an unexpected appearance of a man, because they were waiting for teachers who would explain everything to them. Afterwards the stranger added that the embryos should be pulled out at the beginning of growth, and then shouted for Lala to go. It turned out that that cat was not an ordinary animal, because it was the same Lala to whom the man gave the order. The students immediately realized that this was not an ordinary cat, but a spiritual beast that they would have to fight. The main character did not understand why the psionicist was attacking them, so he grabbed the phone to call someone. But the man, as soon as he saw the phone in the teenager's hands, said that there was no need to call the police. And then the stranger himself also entered the battle, calling upon himself a weapon. He was ready to fight. The man used an ability called a rounded stroke on Luan. And then the boy decided to use his strength, but he did not succeed, because there were not enough points, since the enemy's life force exceeded his own. Lin Wan realized that the strength of the one who attacked them was on the same level as the Thunder Tiger, so it would be difficult to defeat him. After this, the student shouted to his friend to briefly distract the attacker, and he agreed to help his friend. Then Jia Hao told the others to scatter in different directions and try to call the police. Hearing the teenager's plan, the man replied that calling the police was against the rules, so he would not allow them to do it. As soon as the stranger said this, at that very moment he knocked the phones out of the hands of those who tried to call. While the others were fighting for their phones, the girl was trying to escape from the cat, which was ready to attack anyone. But the animal failed to catch up with Lushi, because she was saved by the main character, who quickly got his bearings and pushed the cat away. And although the man appreciated the teenager's speed, he is still sure that the student is not able to cope with Lala alone. Meanwhile, the cat had already switched all its attention to the main character, forgetting about the girl that she was pursuing. One understands that Lala is as fast as he is, and he only has the ability to run away, but not to attack. So if they catch up with him, then the guy is screwed. The student then decided that the only way to defeat the cat was to take control of it by waiting for the right moment, 
so he allowed Lala to get as close to him as possible. A stranger saw this and started shouting for the guy to dodge, and the cat stopped because it was a dangerous moment. And when Lala approached the distance the guy needed, he used his ability to capture, spending almost all his points on it. But Lin accepted that victory was more important than accumulated points, so he still bit her, spending a thousand of his points. The man watching this did not understand what was happening and what the student was doing. Lala's powers included perception, flexibility, playfulness, shadow walking, sharp claws, and Buddha image. Having chosen one of the cat's talents, the guy began to wait for the submission to work in order to finally calm Lala down. But instead of submitting, the cat turned into a large unknown beast that was ready to continue the battle. Seeing that everything was getting out of control, the stranger ordered Lala to stop, and she again became a calm, sweet cat. Afterwards, the man told the guys to calm down too, puzzling everyone he forced to fight. The stranger explained that he only wanted to test and evaluate the students' abilities, and then apologized for scaring them so much. It turned out that this man's name was Gu Yun Xiao, and he was the teacher for the guys with whom his cat fought. All the students, except the main character, were crazy about this news, because Yun Xiao was the coolest psionicist in their school because he has the fifth level and is part of the preliminary investigation department of the association. According to the description from Wan's friend, their teacher was a terror for villains, because he has countless solved cases, and he is also handsome and cunning. The man's spiritual energy takes the form of ten meters, in his right hand he has a brush, and in his left is the book of life and death. The students were delighted, calling their teacher wonderful Peng Wan and talking about how lucky they were. But the psionicist said that the children should simply call him their mentor, and that would be enough. And then the man noted that five students had passed this year, and before there had never been such a large number, so the director called the hero to teach. Then the teacher added that in half a month the second stage of the exam would take place, so they should have time to prepare well for it. Meanwhile, the cat did not leave Luan's side, and then the mentor noticed how much Lala liked the boy. Afterwards, Yun Xiao suggested that the children go to a special class for training psionics to discuss the second stage of the exam in more detail. The teacher told the students that supernatural power has several gradations, and there are seven levels in total, including absorbing, cyclical, manifesting, transforming, taking shape, chaotic and spiritual enlightenment. And then Lu noticed that their mentor was already level 5, even though he was only 25 years old and such people in the association could be counted on one hand. Yun Xiao explained that in fact it is not worth drawing conclusions about a person's strength based on his level, because the level rather depends on luck. As an example, the mentor took the Thunder Tiger, whose trump card is that it can collect energy in its hand, so he created a technique called the Thunder Fist, and we can say that its level is somewhere between the second and third. But since Wang has perfected his technique to the maximum, he is able to break through a mountain, so if you compare him with Yu Xiao, the tiger will most likely win, so the association decided to recognize that the tiger's strength is comparable to the fifth. Therefore, you should not focus only on the level, but it is better to find your own style in using energy, and then create your own personal technique and become the best in what you know. But it was too early to talk about this, because now the student's task is to concentrate on absorption and cyclicality. Absorption means that one must absorb supernatural power, and the human body absorbs this power gradually. Constant training will help students increase the amount of force they absorb, and after taking a medicine that contains 5% strength, teenagers will need a day to absorb it. One then asked if the medicine was practically the same as SPAR, and then the teacher said that the concentration of force in SPAR exceeds 80%, so it is so dangerous that you can die. The main character was surprised by this information and then decided that it was thanks to the system that the spar did not have a detrimental effect on him. Next comes the second level, called cyclicity, which means that after absorption, the force begins to circulate in the body, strengthening it, allowing a person to surpass his physical capabilities. In theory, you can strengthen all parts of the body, but most people concentrate on strengthening certain ones in order to achieve results faster. During this fortnight, students will have to take a lot of medicine, but they should not be afraid, because the school and the mentor will take care of all the costs, so teenagers just need to take advantage of the opportunity. And once the guys have figured out the theory, it's time to move on to practice. The teenagers began to train a lot, 
and after they had used up all their strength and drank the medicine, the students practiced even more, and then more, and more, and more. The teacher told the children that if they did not have time to get to the top of the mountain, which was only 10 kilometers away, they would do a long plank. Although everyone no longer had any strength, the main character and his friends suddenly began to compete to see who was faster, which helped them move on. Thus, the friends reached the top of the mountain together, continuing to argue about who was stronger. Jia Hao then noted that his friend's progress was very noticeable, even though he said that he did not want to take the exam. But now he is trying so hard. And Lin explained to him that he was trying to become stronger, and not for the sake of the exam, because the guy hadn't even decided yet whether he wanted to take it at all. After all, if he is going to take the exam, he will definitely fall under the control of the association. But the guy doesn't want that, because the hero had already told those who were from the association, and practically no one aroused his trust. While the guys were talking, the rest of the students also gradually reached the top. However, they were three minutes late, so now they have to stand in the plank for an hour. And so that Hao and Luan would not just watch their comrades suffer, they were told to keep the others company. The friends first began to swear that they were forced to stand in the plank, even though they managed to run. And after that Lin asked the teacher if the association was a good place. Then the mentor replied that although the association is not ideal, isn't that why you should try to join it in order to make this place better? The teacher himself joined the association when he was 17 years old, and he did this in order to make the association an even brighter place. Although the Sionists thought that his speech sounded naive, it greatly inspired the guys who wanted to become the same as their mentor. So all 15 days passed, and then came the second stage of the exam, for which the students were vigorously preparing. Having gathered their strength, the teenagers went to the second round of the supernatural power exam. At this stage, many children from different schools gathered, and this was only a fifth of all people, because there are four more collection points for the exam. Because of this, teenagers began to doubt whether they could compete with so many people. The Unified Supernatural Strength Exam is the main test of skill in which all competitors will undergo five types of competitions, including shooting, strength, assault, sensory and running, each of which can achieve a maximum score of 100 points and the top 1,200 competitors will advance to the final third round. Until the competition began, all the guys gathered in a self-service cafe, where they shared their experiences with each other. And while everyone was worried, Lin Luan ate calmly, because the food was free and delicious. Then Hao decided that his friend was right, and told everyone that they needed to eat well to have strength. And then three people entered the cafe, one of whom ridiculed Luan for seeming to be always hungry, and Lin, in turn, immediately received 10 points for hostility from Fu Guangquan. The teenager did not understand why they immediately disliked him so much if he did nothing. It turned out that this guy's father is on the State Development and Reform Committee, and he is the boss of Hao's father. Fu Guangquan told the teenagers that it was as if they had come for a free meal and not for an exam, and then added that he did not want to offend anyone, but simply wanted to share his experience. Speaking so that the entire cafe could hear him, Guangquan began to talk about how this round would not be so easy, because last year some of the contestants broke their arms due to improper use of force. Everyone in the cafe started talking about how Guanco liked to bully other teenagers, so it was a pity for the five kids he scared to death. But this guy failed to intimidate the main character, because he saw the strength of his opponent, knowing that he could use his ability on him. The student offered to measure their strength when the exam began. Lin decided to make an agreement in which, if he wins, then his opponent in front of the whole school will wish good luck to Luan's team, and if on the contrary, then the main character will quit his studies after the exam and will never return to it. Hao thought that his friend was crazy, because Guanco was considered the strongest student in his school, and this agreement was too risky. The guy ridiculed Luan for being so self-confident that he even dared to challenge him. Guangquan was very popular, and when he was called to a shooting competition, the other participants began to whisper about how good the guy was in each of the competitions. The teenager's total number of shooting points was 87, which was a very good result. But the guy didn't show his joy, saying that today's result was acceptable to him. And while this popular young man was thinking that the guy who challenged him had some kind of trump card in his head, he, in turn, received 42 points in the shooting and considered that he was quite good. 
Others were very worried about the main character because of his argument, and he showed such a bad result. The participants were then asked to prepare for the strength test competition that was next. Contestant number 068, Fu Guangquan, received the final strength score of 89, and the number 143 participant, Lin Luan, received only 65 points, which was inferior to his opponent's points. Therefore, the opponent of the protagonist realized that he was in vain to worry about Luan, because he turned out to be too weak. Meanwhile, Lin calmly continued to eat, as if nothing had happened, although he understood that if he lost, he would have to quit his studies. Then his friend began to swear at the student, because how could it be that the boy was 69 points behind, but still found time to eat? Luan reassured everyone that there was no need to lose enthusiasm just yet because they could still show others how strong they were. The next test was a sensory test in which all participants had to go to their rooms, in which there were 300 rats, and in this task they were required to find one rat in which Spar was hidden. And while Lin was thinking that it was his turn to show himself, his opponent at the same time decided to deal with everything as quickly as possible, because he considered rats an abomination. And while the participants in the sensory test were asked to go to their rooms, two figures appeared in the background. It turned out that they were not just strangers, but Lily and her mentor, the head of the supervision department, Yang Lu. Lily pointed out to the man the teenager she was talking about earlier, and then asked the teacher if the student could pass this dangerous round. And then two people met Xiao Qinlin, who is the deputy head of the public security department, and it was with her that the main character recently crossed paths. Xiao asked Lily and her boss about what they were doing here to which she received a response, explaining her presence by saying that cases of murders had become more frequent lately, so she was looking around and giving everyone advice. Then a noise was heard on their sight, and it turned out that it was all because someone passed the test very quickly. At that moment, Guanquin was just coming out, so he decided that all these ovations were in his honor, and the guy had already begun to thank the crowd flying towards him, but the people, in turn, pushed him away, rushing to someone else. Then the self-confident teenager realized that all these enthusiastic screams were not in his honor, which means that someone completed the task faster. It turned out that all attention was directed towards Luan, because he found the spar in 10 seconds, but his opponent took 2 minutes to do it. The main character explained this result by the fact that as soon as the door opened, the rat with the spar immediately ran out to his leg, and he, in turn, immediately caught it. But it doesn't matter how because Luan won in any case and received a hundred points for it, starting to catch up with his opponent. And while Lin was happy about his victory, he didn't even notice that he was approaching the woman he met on the first day of receiving his power. He was so busy thinking about the fact that there were two more tests left, which meant that there were still chances, that he didn't even pay any attention to the stranger who called out to him. And then the girl decided that she had simply made a mistake, since she did not receive any reaction. But it turned out that Luan recognized her, but simply did not show any sign. The next test for the participants was a 400-meter race, and it so happened that the main character ended up in the same group with his opponent. Fu Guang was sure that the victory would go to him, but then Lin told him that at school he was always first in the races. This turned out to be the case this time too, because Luan ran the fastest and received 100 points for this test, but his opponent received 75 for it. But the protagonist's opponent did not want to believe in his defeat, so he began to shout that the race does not solve anything, but the next test will definitely be his. And the last test was an assault, in which participants had to kill as many bats as possible within five minutes. And then Fu Guang said that this test was definitely his, because not only was he strong, but Lin was still 22 points behind him. Luan understood that even if he killed one mouse after another, he would not have time to catch the required number in five minutes, and so he began to think if there were any other ways to win. And then the teenager remembered the words of his teacher about how to activate his ability, releasing his spiritual energy outward. Lin actually began to release his spiritual energy, thinking that bats were excellent at detecting ultrasonic vibrations. Fu Guang noticed that the bats flew in the same direction, so he followed where exactly the animals were moving. And then he realized that they were all flying towards Luan, surprised that the hero decided to risk his life for the sake of victory, 
because the bats could easily kill the student. The protagonist's rival tried to save him by shouting for him to quickly hide his spiritual power because there were too many bats, so it would be difficult to defeat them all. Meanwhile, Lin waited until there were enough bats to activate his power, and as soon as the number of mice became very large, the teenager used his power on them all, killing all the mice that surrounded him with a couple of movements. It turned out that Luan killed a record number of mice and surpassed all the people examined before him from all over China. Thus, for the assault the main character received 99 points, having killed 435 mice in 5 minutes, and his total points were 406, and his opponent received 69 for the assault, and the total number of points was 398. This means that Lin won the argument, and his opponent is obliged to fulfill his part of the deal which included supporting the Luan school. The rest of the students from the main character's school were in another group, and for them the competition would begin in the afternoon, so Lin tried his best to support the guys. As a result, Lu Jiahao received 404 points in total after all competitions. Chen Doji received a total of 341 points, which was a good result. Participant Lin Su received 334 points, falling slightly short of his friend. Wan Lu Shu received a total of 352 points, and since all five candidates from the main character schools showed such a good result, they all ultimately qualified for the final round. The teenagers were happy that they showed such an excellent result, so they went to celebrate with their teacher. The mentor told the students that the final selection was in three days, so they should try not to worry, believe in themselves and take a good rest. Being in a good mood, Jia Hao saw that he was receiving a call so he decided to leave for a while to talk on the phone. The teenager's dad called, and as soon as the boy answered the call, the father told him something that immediately changed the student's mood. According to the news, cases of attacks by intruders in the eastern region have become more frequent recently, so they asked all citizens to be more vigilant. The heroes, meanwhile, checked into a hotel for participants in the final qualifying exam for psionics in the eastern region because the final test location will be a park in the suburbs where the main character and his comrades live. The students were glad that the competition was taking place in their hometown, so they decided that they should try their best. And then the teenager's conversation was interrupted by Lin, who asked the others if they had seen how. Then everyone decided that the boy was late at home, where he had previously gone on business. However, the main character was still worried because his friend was not answering the phone, but then he decided that he would wait a little longer. Luan's patience ran out soon enough, so he hurried to find his comrade, because he couldn't just disappear the day before the final exam, which was very important to him. The teenager ran to Hao's house and noticed that there were no lights on anywhere, which was very puzzling, because something could have happened. Then Lin went into the house, and walking around, the teenager found the body of the manager in the wine cellar, which was in terrible condition and then the boy immediately called his mentor to break the news that Hao and his family were missing. The student also added that he found a manager who was dead and looked like a deceased mummy. Then the mentor ordered the teenager to urgently leave this place, and in the meantime the man himself would send someone to the house, because he himself was unable to come. But the main character did not want to leave, so he decided to wait for the psionicist on the spot, and then he heard some noise deciding that they had arrived so quickly from the association. But it turned out to be an unknown man who was talking on the phone about how he would deal with the corpse, and then added that he hated covering other people's tracks. With a dissatisfied look, the man grabbed the corpse by the head with one hand, as if it weighed nothing. After this, the man told the body to disappear and burned it using samadhi fire. The stranger scattered the remaining ashes into the wind, reporting over the phone that everything had been settled and a handful of ashes would not pass as evidence, and then said that he would be there soon, driving somewhere by car. The main character did not want to leave his friend in trouble, so he decided to chase the car to find out where the man went. The car was driving quite fast, but Juan did not lag behind it, wanting to find his comrade, who was now in danger, and this stranger led him to a building that Lin immediately recognized, because it was the trading building of Hao's father. It turned out that there were many people in this place who began to talk about the fact that the head of the red puppets had returned. The first thing the stranger was met by was the attacker Lu Qin, who said that the man had worked hard. And then the attackers Zhao Xiyu and Zhao Shudong approached the unknown man, 
who made it clear to the man that he had been messing around with such an ordinary businessman for a long time. Lu Jiahao's father, Lu Tianming, was also in this place, and he told the criminals to let his son go, and then he would do anything. And then Lu Qin told him not to worry, because if he cooperates, no one will get hurt. And then he promised that they would sort everything out by tomorrow lunch. As a result, the attackers did not know where the key to the cage was, and then Xu Yu could not stand it and simply broke it. However, only the father was taken from the cage, and the son was forced to continue to sit quietly in it. One of the criminals said that he and his father would go and sort out some issues, return for dinner, and the rest should behave quietly so that the association's psionics would not come. Then Xu Dong said that she also wanted to go, but she was still left to look after the hostage. Xu Dong decided that she was in charge now, so she told the others to do what she wanted, and then ordered them to bring a boy with slicked back hair. The girl was immediately obeyed, throwing a hostage at her feet, whom she must keep an eye on. After this, Xu Dong told the guy that his father knew that they were both already dead, but her sister said that Tian Ming would agree to cooperate to save her son's life. And because of such a heroic act, the girl was so moved that she told the hero that he could run like a stray dog to call the police, because this was his last chance to escape. And then Xu Dong added that if her people did catch the teenager, he would be in big trouble. Then the teenager ran, not to save himself, but to save his father. But the guy didn't manage to run far because they pushed him, catching up with him because he fell. The boy asked to be released because he wanted to save his father, but one of the villains said that it was not interesting, intending to beat the teenager. But the attacker did not have time to do this, because Luan came running to his friend's aid, cutting off the man's leg, which he swung at the defenseless student. At this moment, Jia Hao realized that now everything is not so bad, because at the moment he is no longer alone but with a faithful comrade. Lin shouted to the villain that they should not dare touch his friend, because then they would be in trouble. Then Jia Hao asked what Wan was doing in this place, and the teenager told him the whole situation and how he ended up here. And instead of gratitude, the main character heard cries that he would rather call the police than risk his life. And while the friends were arguing, Xu Dong noticed that Wan's spiritual energy was fluctuating, which means that his power awakened not so long ago so they definitely wouldn't be able to escape. And Jia Hao agreed with her, because criminals are many times stronger than teenagers, so Luan should not have come. The main character realized that they really couldn't win just like that, and so he unexpectedly hit his friend so hard that he lost consciousness. The attackers were very surprised by this outcome, because their rivals must rarely take their allies out of the game. The guy explained this action by saying that since they couldn't win in an ordinary fight, they needed to resort to an unusual method, because the teenager was ready for trouble and had accumulated a large number of points to use his strength. And when the student was attacked by one of the criminals, the teenager quickly used the ability of submission, waiting for the result. After this, the boy told the attackers to attack all at once, thinking of subjugating as many people as possible. Laughing with such self-confidence of the boy, the criminals rushed to him in a crowd, not noticing how he began to bite them all in order to then take over their minds. Xu Dan then began to worry that the boy would be killed too quickly, and she wouldn't even have time to have fun. But then the girl noticed that everyone suddenly stopped fighting, but simply stopped, like dolls. The main character was happy because he had enough points to use the power of submission on everyone. Using his ability, the guy saw that this girl was the strongest among the others, because to use the ability on her it was necessary to spend a thousand points. But fortunately for the student, he had 3,000 points, so he had enough to zombify Xu Dan. Meanwhile, the girl thought that the other attackers had stopped to allow her to finish off the teenager herself. Luan, meanwhile, ordered all his subordinates to attack the unsuspecting attacker together. Xu Dan did not understand what those who were supposed to obey her were doing, because they had completely stopped following her orders. When the girl realized that this was not a joke, and the others were really trying to harm her, she immediately turned into a monster activating her power. And then the attacker shouted to the guy that since he had done something with her henchmen, he should now say goodbye to his head. But she was unable to attack because the teenager was protected by one of the villains controlled by Lin. Everyone controlled by the student also activated their abilities and then attacked all together, making it much more difficult for Xu Dan to fight off everyone. Luan, meanwhile, 
was thinking that this was the first time he had encountered such a powerful psionicist, and in the future, villains like this girl would appear on the boy's path more and more often. The teenager understood that when he accumulated enough points to activate the capture, then he would be able to fight all the villains, but for now he needed to become stronger. After these thoughts, the boy ordered his slaves to release Shudan in order to fight her himself. The girl first asked why everyone obeys the guy and not her, and then clarified how the teenager was going to defeat her, and then Lin threw the ball, and Shudan could not resist the temptation and ran after it. Because of this, the attacker became even more angry, because she wanted the student to fight with her seriously, and then he asked her why she decided that he was not serious. After all, while the girl was distracted, Lin tried to suddenly attack her, but the villainess was able to dodge. The fight continued in the same vein, where two opponents tried to hit each other, but always managed to dodge. Shudong understood that at this rate she would waste all her spiritual power if she continued to remain in animal form. Then the attacker remembered how her sister taught her a technique with which she could give shape to her energy. The criminal decided to do as her sister taught her to create a spiritual body. Thanks to the fact that Shudong listened carefully to everything, in the end she was able to create shadow cats. But the girl understood that she could only hold out for no more than 15 seconds. Then the villainess immediately ordered her cats named Grape, Strelka and Griffin to attack the teenager. It turned out that these clots of energy that Shudong created would explode when ordered, and so she ordered them to surround Wan so that he could not escape. The girl's plan worked, because the shadow cats were able to quickly surround the hero and explode, so Shudong decided that she had already won this fight. But it turned out that Lin remained virtually unharmed after the explosion, so he struck the criminal again. And this time Shudan did not have time to dodge, because she was too surprised by how Wan withstood her attack. The girl did not understand how it happened that the guy remained unharmed after the bombs, because she definitely saw that they hit the teenager. Then Lin explained to the attacker that he simply managed to copy the ability to harden the integument, which one of the girl's accomplices had, so this power protected him. And then the student admitted that he copied more than 20 skills, and improve some of them with the help of points. And while Shudan was trying to understand what the boy was talking about, he himself added that his rival had already used up all her spiritual energy. So Luan was victorious in this battle. While the guy was approaching the attacker, she remembered the words of her sister, who said that girls would no longer tolerate offenders, but would become the strongest psionics. Then the criminal began to cry that Lin should not kill her, because then her sister would feel bad. The teenager reassured the girl, because he didn't want to kill her, but simply decided to teach her a lesson, and in the meantime he copied her power called the Shadow Cat, and in the end the guy had only 32 points left. Xu Dong was very grateful to Luan for not killing her. Having dealt with the girl, the student ordered all his subordinates to go in search of the villains who had left, and in the meantime Jia Hao woke up. The protagonist's friend did not know what was happening so he began to fight with those who were currently on their side. After that, the guy found Luan and asked what was going on here, and then thought that he and his friend had just been captured. Lin told his comrade that he did not remember anything because he was hit by the villains, and then Jia Hao decided to act according to the previous plan to defeat all the enemies. And then Luan told his friend that there was no longer any need to fight, because the people around them had ceased to be villains. The student did not want to reveal his strength, so he began to come up with a reason why their enemies became good, on the fly, saying that they just had a conversation, and after that the villains admitted their mistakes and wanted to correct themselves. In confirmation of the young man's words, his subordinates began to shout that they realized their guilt and wanted to change. According to Luan, the whole point is that he is simply a great speaker, and therefore was able to convince all the criminals. And in the end, Jiao decided that there was no time to deal with this because he needed to quickly find the three criminals who took his father somewhere. Lin warned that he had already told the teacher everything, but if help did not arrive in time, he would have to fight the three strong attackers himself. No one knew where the cave in which the criminals had led, because even the end was not visible. And then Jia Hao remembered about the exam that was about to start, so the guy apologized to his friend for the fact that they wouldn't make it in time. But Luan was not as offended as his comrade because Jia Hao had been preparing for him for several years, and Lin did not really want to be a psionicist. Meanwhile, the exam was about to begin, and all the examinees were already ready, 
Then Luan and Jia Hao's comrades began to worry that the guys were still missing, because in this case they might be disqualified as soon as the gates closed. The main character's rival from the previous stage also took the exam, who was dissatisfied with the fact that those two did not show up, and the guy was going to take revenge on them. The head of the Eastern District Administration, Wang Zhe, has already announced that there are only 10 minutes left before the start of the competition, so everyone is asked to re-familiarize themselves with the rules before the exam begins. Within four hours, all participants will need to get to the tower, which is located in the center of the park, where everyone was located. This competition would be observed by the surveillance department, the security department, and the presidium, and when they were all ready, the final test began. The gates began to open, and all the examinees were already preparing for what they were about to go through. But the main character and his friend never showed up, which made their comrades worry. The absence of the young men was noticed not only by their acquaintances, but also by Lily and her boss, who tried to find the teenagers in the crowd, but to no avail. And for the students, this was not the time to think about the exam, because first of all, now they need to hurry up and save Jia Hao's father. Lin realized that he would need glasses for the battle, so he ordered the two men to do some mischief somewhere so that they would be hated, and the main character told the rest that they need to speed up the pace, but first they need to develop a plan of action, and then they were interrupted by a man whom Juan had already seen at his friend's house when he noticed the tracks. The girl also recognized the intruder, saying that his name was Chi Kue, and then added that he should let everyone through because she wanted to see her sister. Then the criminal said that Shudong was troublesome, and then added that when she gets into trouble for this, she shouldn't blame him. Chikue did not suspect any trick, and then the girl asked him where they were going, to which he replied that they were in search of treasure. Then Lin asked his friend why they captured his father, and he explained that it was all because the man was developing land ownership, so he was familiar with the area, and the villain needed a guide to find spiritual stones. But the guys knew that there was little spar in their city, so they did not understand why the criminals decided to look for something here. And then one realized that the villains were heading to the park, because there were now a lot of miraculous medicines that had been prepared for the examinees. Meanwhile, the exam was strictly controlled, and everyone was watching that only ten minutes had passed, and two had already passed the first obstacles, which means that this year the participants are very strong. Jia Hao began to doubt his friend's words because the exam has serious security system, so going there for the sake of SPAR is like signing your own death warrant. In addition, this year their mentors group is responsible for safety, so it will be almost impossible to achieve results. And while the guys were talking about their teacher, unknown people in hoods came to him. These strangers turned out to be criminals who began to attack the group in charge of security. The psionics did not have time to react, so the tower, to which all the participants were rushing, was damaged by the explosion of the attackers. The hooded strangers did not stop at one department and went through the rest, causing harm to people and the building. The stranger was asked where Commander Gu was, and he replied that the commander and his men were all already defeated. Then guards from the gathering place of the district security subdivision tried to contact the people in the tower. The villain heard this and told the others to respond to the guards and inform them that everything was under control, so there was no need to worry. And then the district chief said that everything was in order and nothing unusual, so everyone should return to their positions. The attacker noted that the boss values his personality much more than the lives of those participating in the test. Lily and her mentor realized that something was wrong, so the girl used her power of invisibility and disappeared from the criminals unnoticed. Meanwhile, the district chief asked the villains who they were and what they were going to do. And then the criminal asked if anyone remembered the incident when the city of Chao was destroyed eight years ago, and in response to this he received only silence. Then the villain decided to remind everyone. Before the incident, the association of supernatural power existed only in the eastern region, and not as now, scattering its branches around the world. And then the city of Chao, the ghetto of the eastern region, was captured and then destroyed by the group Thick Mist. 1,375 residents died in that event, and since the association was originally an unofficial organization, it was not able to arrive at the scene in time. The man was promoted from a management pawn to the chief of the eastern region thanks to the fact that his fiery speech ignited a fire in the hearts of the people, which led to the official recognition of the association, 
which soon turned into an industrial giant. However, the attacker doubted that everything in this story was clear. After this, the narrator was informed that Lu Qin had arrived, so the man interrupted his reasoning about the story he was telling. The commander gave the order for the scammers to begin, and they replied that they understood everything and would act harmoniously. Then Jia Hao's father asked the villains if they could finally let him and his son go, because he did as they wanted and led them right under Shergong Park. At that moment, the third one reached the two criminals, who brought with him a crowd controlled by Luan, as well as himself and his friend. Jia Hao was ready to rush to his father, but his comrade stopped him, because it was too early to reveal their plan. Meanwhile, Xi Yu scolded her sister, because she was given an order, which she disobeyed. But at that moment Lu said that it was good that they had come, otherwise he would have had to go a long way to replenish his energy reserves. And he suddenly grabbed one of Luan's slaves, and no one had time to do anything, because everything happened too unexpectedly. And then the man who was captured began to quickly dry out, turning into a mummy. Qin, meanwhile, threw the body away, and then said that it would not be enough for him, and he was still hungry. The fraudster began to look around in search of a new victim, and then he turned his attention to Jia Hao's father, starting to reach out to him with his hand. And at that moment Jia Hao himself could not resist and struck the attacker, saving his father. The man was very surprised to see his son here, and he, in turn, apologized for helping only now. While his friend was busy with dialogue, Lin ordered all his puppets not to wait, but to attack their opponents together. And at that moment, when the fight was just beginning, Wan ordered his friend and his father to quickly leave here, because at the moment it was possible. But as it turned out, Lu Qin was not upset by the fact that their loved ones rebelled. The criminal simply began to absorb the energy of everyone who tried to fight him. Xu Dan also wanted to get involved in the fight, but her sister did not let her, not understanding what was happening to the girl. Luan realized that the scammers were targeting the test taker's meeting place so he needed to immediately inform the people in the central tower. The villains in the tower, meanwhile, were told to take all the psionic reagent they needed, but the leader of the criminals replied that they did not need the reagent at all, but all the examinees who were now in the park. And then all the teenagers who were taking the exam saw a large number of rats and bats approaching them. The children were very surprised by this turn of events, because they were not warned that animals from previous stages would also be in the finals. There were so many mice and rats that the students had no idea how to fight them off. It turned out that the animal attack was the fault of the primordial chaos beast spirit, and because of this, everyone involved was surrounded. Therefore, because of the rats and mice, the teenagers were forced to rush to the tower as quickly as possible to escape. Lily, meanwhile, tried to call at least someone who could help her save her teacher and the others by stopping the attackers. The protagonist's comrades were also running away from the animals and then the girl tripped over a stone and fell, so that the mice and rats began to approach her. But the animals failed to catch up with the heroine, because Fu Guangkun came to her aid, who killed all the creatures that tried to attack the student, and then the four examinees were left to be torn apart by the animals with which they were surrounded. The former rival shouted to the others to try to escape if they did not want to die, and then a shadow cat appeared in the distance, and then a voice began to be heard, telling Grape to go forward. The cat approached the students and exploded with bright colors, scaring everyone around. It turned out that this cat was called by Lin Luan to save his comrades from animals. Then the others began to question the main character, but he interrupted them, saying that now was not the time for chatter, because at the moment he needed to run. After this, Luan ordered everyone to escape through the underground passage, which the attackers had previously used, but now they are not there, and then Guangkuan asked what to do with the exam. Then the student explained to his opponent that the exam was not the most important thing to think about right now. At the same time, one of the examinees said that these were just mice and rats, so they would have to cope with them. But this guy had to fight not only with animals, but also with an attacker who used a technique called fire taste on the boy. The villain said that in a group there will always be one or two people, like this student, who take the initiative to make noise and cause trouble for others. And the way out of such a situation is very simple, because you just need to eliminate the initiators, and then the rest will immediately rush into chaos. Everyone really immediately began to panic, and the man shouted after them that the students would not run away from him. Meanwhile, the tower guards stood motionless, without leaving their places, 
as they had been ordered by their superior. Meanwhile, Lily tried to explain to the men that they had an emergency, because the tower had been captured by attackers. The villain's plan worked, and all the examinees ran to the tower in the hope of salvation, which they ultimately did not receive. Then one of the attackers reported to his commander that all the students were assembled. The leader replied that he understood everything, and then added that after eight years he would finally be able to make the case public. After this, the man turned to the administrative workers with the words that they should know the other side of the fall of the city of Chao. The attacker said that at that time the association deliberately arrived later in order to provoke the public and gain the desired status. The association's resulting power cost the lives of 1,375 Chao residents. The criminal said that he wanted to pull out the weed, meaning association, by the roots, and the examinees were chosen by him as revolutionaries. Then Lily's mentor thought about what this psycho wanted to do with the children. Lu Qin asked his commander if they could finally begin their plan, and then it seemed to all the students that some kind of earthquake had begun, because the earth began to disappear from under their feet. But it turned out that it was not an earthquake, but a large monster that crawled out of the ground. It was a worm called the crown gear, and it was so huge that it killed many students. Then the criminal asked the others if they were familiar with this type of worm, which required a lot of effort to fatten it up. This monster releases a mist-like strand that, when inhaled, produces a stupefying effect that, although it will not affect psionicists, will work for beginners. Then Lily's mentor began to swear at the criminal, asking if he realized what he was going to do to ordinary children. After this, the man added that the military unit already knew what was going on in the tower, so it was better for the villains to just leave and let the children go. But the attacker was not so simple, because he noticed that Lily had left, and he calmly let her go, because in any case, help would not be there in time. The criminal understood that by the time the rescue squad arrived, the villains would be able to do their job. After this, the worm was ordered to begin, and he began to do everything as the criminal had described earlier. The students inhaled this fog and did not understand what it was and what was happening to them. And then the criminal noticed that the monster had stopped, and it became unclear to him why this happened, because the worm had eaten enough of the reagent to give it a lot of strength. The students also began to notice that the fog had stopped appearing, and it also seemed as if the monster was in pain. And then the worm said that he couldn't do it anymore, because it was so disgusting here. It turned out that even the criminals themselves did not know that this worm could talk, because they were very surprised by this fact. Then the worm began to scream that he wanted to get out, and then shouted something about a fierce claw. Half an hour ago, the main character and his comrades were running away from criminals and trying to get to the exit where they would be safe. Here the heroes began to think about what would happen to the rest of the examinees, and this thought made Luan stop. After that, the guy said that he had a strong call of nature and ran away, promising to return. The others tried to call the teenager to stop, but to no avail. Then the friend of the boy who ran away said that the boy knew what he was doing, so he could go. The student understood that he currently had few points, so it would be difficult for him to defeat anyone, so he needed to quickly earn more. The teenager's subordinates did everything they could to make themselves hated, because they behaved horribly in public telling movie endings and pretending to be exhibitionists. And then the young man began to feel waves of spiritual power, realizing that they were from reagents prepared by the Association for Examinees. So he decided to find a warehouse that should be somewhere nearby. Then the guy noticed a large worm that was crawling out of the ground, which the student definitely did not expect to see. The teenager did not understand where this vile worm came from in the park, because he had never seen anything like it before. But it seemed to the guy that this worm did not pose any threat and looked quite friendly. But that was not the case, because this monster suddenly opened its mouth, showing the boy that he clearly posed a threat. After this, the monster flew up, wanting to attack the young man, jumping on him. But the worm did not manage to eat the student, because he reacted in time and dodged. And while Lin was thinking that the worm obviously belonged to the villains and why it was so big, the monster itself disappeared somewhere at that time. And then it dawned on the teenager that the worm had not disappeared, but had gone underground. But the boy realized this too late, because the creature was already under him with its mouth open. As soon as the boy had time to think that he was finished, the monster's mouth slammed shut, and he was eaten. So Luan ended up inside the worm, but he remained alive, because among the abilities he copied there was a defensive one, 
but he didn't know how long he could hold out like that. The student decided that he would gut him out using an ability called a ferocious claw. But then the boy decided that if this monster belonged to the criminals, then he could wait in the belly until the worm itself delivered Luan to the villains. Although the plan was good, the main character had to endure a place in which he was disgusted to be. Then the guy felt that a worm was crawling somewhere, and then he heard the voices of other guys. It was then that the boy decided that it was time to activate the fierce claw and kill the monster from the inside. Thus, the main character killed a monster that could harm a large number of children. Once Lin finally got out of the worm, he began to swear at what kind of war they had staged here, and then said what an abomination this worm was. The main criminal ordered the others to capture the guy who ruined all their plans. Lu Qin, meanwhile, ran to treat the worm, calling it by its name Lady Hell. Xu Yu, meanwhile, turned into a beast, shouting that she would not allow some boy to interfere with them. However, the girl was interrupted by her sister, forcing her to stop to protect Luan. And since no one was going to catch the boy, it had to be done by a man who was not happy about this, because for him it was too steamy. The head of the attackers, meanwhile, asked how long it would take to completely heal the monster. Then Lu Qin replied that it would take him about ten minutes, which did not please his boss at all, because the main attacker understood that they hardly had these ten minutes, because soon other psionics would come running to help the guys. And so the man ordered his subordinates to try to delay the approaching warriors as long as possible in order to gain time. Lily's mentor, meanwhile, looked at Luan, thinking that he had noticed this young man a long time ago. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lin saw the villain who was controlling the fire, and then the teenager decided that this attacker at the moment represented the greatest danger to him. And then someone called the guy's name, and this made Luan surprised because he did not understand whose voice it was. Then the man introduced himself as Lily's mentor, and then explained to the boy that his ability would help them communicate telepathically. The mentor told the guy that help would arrive in 15 minutes, but in the meantime Lin would have to try to detain the intruders. The main character said that he will definitely cope with this task, because a lot depends on it. Meanwhile, the villain could not keep up with Luan, thinking that the guy was running like a cheetah. The attacker then tried to attack the teenager with a wave of fire that was large enough to reach the boy. And although Lin managed to dodge, the man's flame flares up and goes out at his will, so it will be difficult for the student to escape from the fire that surrounded him. And then the young man began to say that he was still a complete beginner, an ordinary student, so the man needed to be easier with him. But the villain didn't really care about the guy's words, so he used an ability called heat on him. However, the teenager didn't even have to dodge, because he used a block and a protective field. Thanks to the abilities that Lin had copied earlier, he was now able to give at least some resistance to the attackers. But even with the use of two forces together, the young man could not resist the blow of the criminal. The boy understood that if his opponent hit him in all seriousness, he would not be able to withstand it, and Juan did not have enough points to bite. The guy avoided the blows as best he could because he understood that if something happened it would be very painful for him. And then a cat named Stalka exploded behind the attacker, which turned out to be an unexpected move for him. And then the boss told the villain not to stay long, because the teenager was deliberately stalling for time. And while the man was dealing with the leader, Luan was able to disappear from view, which caused even more trouble for the criminal. It seemed to the attacker that the guy decided to hide upstairs, so he struck the trees. However, there was not a student there, but another shadow cat, from which the noise came. And while the man was distracted by the cat, Juan decided to stab him from behind while he had the opportunity. Finally, the young man made it clear to the attacker that he was going not only to stall for time, but also to defeat the criminal. But unfortunately, the teenager's blow was not enough to defeat the villain, so the attacker then pushed the boy away from him. And then Lin heard the voice of his mentor, who said that it was too early to think about victory, because now it was much more important to gain time, and then victory would definitely remain with the heroes. And although the teenager understood this, he still wanted to defeat the villain, noticing that he needed less and less points to bite. The student realized that the number of points required for capture is determined by the vitality of the enemy, and therefore it can decrease if the vitality drops. The young man understood that if he lowered the attacker's points a little more, then he would be able to use the power of capture on him. The mentor noticed the persistence of the hero, who could gain even more time than expected. And while Juan tried to stall for time, Lu Qin was able to completely cure the worm, 
which was already ready to continue. 